Hey there, Gavin Gear here from Ultimate Reloader for Frankfurt Arsenal. In this video, we're gonna cover 10 ways that you can stay safe while reloading ammunition. In no particular order, we'll start with number one, which is be sure of your load data. It is super important to cross-reference multiple OEM sources of load data. OEMs are original equipment manufacturers, and you'll typically find load data from bullet manufacturers and powder manufacturers. There are exceptions to that rule, but you're gonna to want to identify which components you're gonna use, look up the appropriate load data, and then cross-reference ideally with another source of load data. There's a bunch of great resources online. Hodgson has a great reloading data center. Nosler has a really good collection of load data for their bullets that gives accuracy results, best performing load combinations, that kind of thing. I have a number of load manuals in paper form, hardbound books, softbound books. I like to keep these near the reloading bench so that I can check, double check, and triple check my load data. Number two is to stay focused and avoid distractions. You need to do whatever you can do to stay focused on the task at hand to make sure you don't miss any steps, you don't use the wrong data, you don't grab the wrong components, etc. If the radio is going to be distracting from you, turn it off. Don't try and watch TV while you're reloading. And if you have people entering and leaving the room, make sure you take careful note of where you left off and where you should pick up. If you stay focused and you avoid the distractions, your chances of big problems go way down. Number three, wear proper eye and ear protection. Eye protection is the most important. Ideally, you'll be wearing safety glasses. If you had a problem with a detonation of a primer or other issues, it's gonna protect your eyes. That's a super important consideration. If you're working with primers, especially on a progressive press or say something like with a hand priming tool, you're gonna to wanna to consider using ear protection because if you did have a chain reaction of primers detonating, that could definitely be detrimental to your hearing. Number four, don't use components that you can't identify, especially powder and primers. If you have a powder measure that's full and you don't know it is, dump it out. It hurts to do so, but it's better than making a catastrophic mistake. Same with primers. If you can't identify the primers that are in your reloading press or are in a bench priming tool or a hand priming tool, the best thing is to throw them out. Better safe than sorry, and the wrong components can cause big trouble. Number five goes along with number four, and that's to only keep the components that you're currently loading with on the bench. It also helps to write down your load data right next to the press so that you can cross-reference, do I have the right powder and do I have the right primers? Again, the goal is to never mix up components. That could be disastrous. Number six, always keep a very close eye on your powder charge and monitor that powder charge. If you have no powder in your case, that's called a squib load, you could very easily stick a bullet in the bore and a follow-up shot could be completely catastrophic. If you have too little a powder charge, it could be similar to that squib load. And if you have too much powder in your case, you could definitely have an overpressure situation, blow up your firearm and or yourself. There's a bunch of different products that can help you stay safe in this arena, including powder, check dies, buzzers, and other types of devices. You should always either have a device, check your powder charge, or have a visual powder check. Every single cartridge that goes through the process. Very important to keep yourself safe. Number seven, start well below max charge weight from your load data and work your way up carefully. When you look up load data, typically there's a starting load and a maximum load. And what you wanna do is start at least 15% down from that maximum load, test a few cartridges, look for signs for pressure, monitor your velocity, look for any erratic behavior, slowly, incrementally work your way up. Yes, it takes extra time, but it helps you ensure that your ammunition is gonna be safe in your firearm. Number eight, be very careful about variations in bullet seating depth. Certain cartridges, 45 ACP would be an example, can have huge spikes in chamber pressure 
for a very small change in bullet seating depth. It's another factor you're likely to find in your low data cartridge overall length. Make sure you use it, make sure you monitor it. Your ammunition will function more reliably and consistently, and it's yet another way you can stay safe. Number nine, this might seem totally obvious, but it is very important to keep sparks and flames well away from the area where you're storing components and where you're reloading. And definitely don't smoke cigarettes, pipes, or cigars while you're loading. And number 10, never attempt to seat or reseat a primer after there's powder in the case. If the primer were to go off, you'd have a big problem on your hands. So there you go, 10 ways to help you stay safe while reloading your own ammunition. If you wanna check out the rest of the series that covers both pistol and rifle reloading, go to frankfurtarsenal.com arsenal. Thanks for watching.